Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. This episode of Shop Talk, I'm going to be talking about this guy. So we've got a new tool in the shop, and it is a vinyl cutter. So I've been wanting one of these for a while, but I really haven't justified what am I going to use it for. I don't really want to make signs, but I ran into a couple things the other day where I needed to make um, sort of decals for some 3D printed projects I was doing uh, to label them. And I was thinking, man, it would be nice if I had a vinyl cutter and I could just make some vinyl overlays. Because one of the things, and I'll show this a little bit more in some of the upcoming episodes, is I've done a number of Inkscape tutorials where I take, you know, something in Inkscape and I extrude it to a 3D object. Now, the cool piece here is I can take that same Inkscape design, import it into the software for this vinyl cutter, and I can create labels that match the shape of the 3D printed object. Does that make sense? Well, it does make sense and it actually works out very well. So I can create different labels and things like that. So it's a very powerful tool actually. Um, so I'm pretty excited about having this in. Now, I want to talk a little bit about my selection. So there's a lot of these guys out there and, and especially some rather big ones. Now, what I purchased is a 19 inch unit and a couple different things that I want to share about this is while it says it's 19 inches the opening itself is about 19 inches maybe about 19 and a half inches um, however the cutting area to the cutter over here uh, is not 19 inches so they sort of fib a little bit because the cutter head only goes out about 16 inches. So while it's going to take a 19 inch piece of material, it's only going to be able to cut about 16 inches, which is okay by me. Now I didn't I didn't realize this when I purchased it because it said it's a 19 inch unit. Um, and so it only cuts up to 16 inches, but of 19 inch material. Now, some of the things you might want to take a look at, and I'm going to kind of share my purchasing decision criteria for getting this unit versus some of the other ones, because for like 20 bucks more, I could have had a 31-inch unit, and I'm, I'm kind of vexing. Why don't I get a 31? Bigger is always better, right? Well, then it kind of hit me. I mean, you know, because again, the 31-inch the and the larger ones come with their own stand and everything. And they take up a lot of room. And quite frankly, with everything I have, I'm running out of room. So uh, the 19-inch version made a lot more sense to me. Uh, the other thing is, is it's, ni it's 19 inches wide, but infinitely long. Now that's important to remember. So if you want to do banners, you can do, um, you know, a 19 inch by infinitely la large banner. Now the larger printers, actually only practical or necessary maybe is the better way put if you want to do some really big signs some banner type signs you know roll up banners which they actually give you some of that material and here it is so uh, this actually comes with it it's kind of big I don't know if I can get it all in frame here but this this is actually a little bit bigger than so it's about 24 inches uh, sorry for bumping you there it's about 24 inches and the idea is is you feed this material and that's what this stuff is over here the release tape and the material in here and they give you some samples you can kind of see this is shorter shorter material I'm sorry this is all kind of big so you're gonna get bumped a little bit um, and you feed it through and then you put it on the banner now with the 31 inch it's really you know you make some really big banners with that and so with that um, with the big banners, I, I don't want to make banners. And so at most I want to do maybe some shirts, glasses, mugs, 3D printed things, laser uh, stuff, and really put have it to make overlays and face plates. Um, face plates probably not a best way to call it, but in other words to label the stuff and, and also to do branding for my YouTube channels also. Um, so after I got thinking about it, the 19 inch does is is far bigger than what I need. Also for my drone channel, I want to use this to create uh, skins for my drones. And, and typically, the biggest practical one is, is about 350 millimeters or about 14 inches. Uh, and as I showed, the, the, this will handle a piece of 19 inch material and cut up to 16. So this is plenty big enough for all those purposes. And the pieces is this will sit on my desk. I don't have to have an extra stand for it. 
uh, doesn't take up a ton of room. I can also set up the feed material, this material to feed from the bottom. Uh, so what I'm going to do is actually uh, print a stand, and I'll probably do do a video on it. Uh, it. Well, probably not print, probably CNC is a better way to put it. A, a stand for this and feed the material up through the bottom and take up far less space. And so this really made a lot of sense for me to purchase this unit even though I could get a much bigger unit for $20 more, roughly $20 more. So I wanted to share that logic with you. Um, the other piece is that all the different type of materials or vinyl materials I can cut with this I think is very cool and the usage. Because again, one of the things, and Dr. Dave sort of brought my attention back to this, is, is I started out 3dtech.com as sort of a way to, you know, share um, sort of the, the, the maker concept of home manufacturing or cottage manufacturing with 3D printers, laser cutters, CNC's and, and the, the gist of the channel has been to show you how to use this technology or to improve this technology to achieve that in the long run. Now I've, I've you know, so when I show you how to do a better heated bed, the idea is that you do a better heated bed that that machine becomes more commercially viable to print something for Etsy, eBay, or prototype it for whatever else. So everything I really try to focus on this channel is how to commercially make something more viable, how to take a low cost, you know, maybe consumer grade item and make it a semi-commercial or commercially viable um, implementation. And that's the same thing I look at with this guy. And, and part of the reason I'm sharing this with you guys is because if you're into, for example, 3D printing, CNCing, or laser cutting um, for either prototyping, Etsy, or whatever, this is an excellent addition because, again, as I mentioned, and I'll do some videos in the future, you can meld the two together with this and really create a high-quality professional product because even with 3D printing, you know, you get the striation lines and everything in it, but what if you could print a skin for that 3D printed object out of vinyl on something like this? Would that not make it look far more professional? So, anyways, just kind of wanted to share this with you guys. I'll have links to this below and, and some more stuff out, you know, in the description below and some cards up there uh, with this particular unit. And, well, I should probably back up, you know, cost considerations. Um, I've had forgot about those and I even talked about the business aspects. So, with this, this was about a little less than 250 uh, US dollars. The... Um, uh, 31 inches are typically around 270 and I think part of the reason for the lower cost of these is it's sort of like an inkjet printer because they want you to buy the consumables obviously you know because if they sell you the machine it only works if you have the vinyl and everything sort of like a 3d printer you have to buy the filament too um, and, and so the cost is really affordable I mean th th this is less than basically all my 3D printers except for maybe the Tarantula and the Monoprice Mini. And so, I mean, cost effective, this is hugely cost effective and what I can do with it is is, is actually probably broader than those devices. So, um, and again, the material cost is not that expensive because you have your vinyl and you have your release tape. So basically for those who are not aware the way that this thing works, is this cuts out the vinyl and uh, actually I have some more of the stuff down here uh, because this is actually you get your software and you get some license plates and some signs and actually I want to talk about that for a minute the sign thing because now these are as you see the the, the back back of these are the signs and so these are about 16 inch signs, 16 by 24 signs, which is actually pretty good size. But one of the things I wanted to be able to do was um, 24 by 24 signs. And this is where I almost got the 31 inch. But I got thinking when I do the 24 by 24 signs, because my wife's into real estate and that's sort of the reason. And that was sort of the byproduct of, of buying this is I could make real estate signs is the fact is I'm going to do them in multiple parts anyway. So I'm not going to print. I, I mean, because one of the things to keep in mind, if you print a 24 by 24 sheet of material and you try to lay that all down, that's going to be a bit more difficult. And the fact is I can do two 19s and get the same effect. So I can still get the same effect 
project and do a 24 by 24 square real estate sign. So anyway, something to keep in mind. But uh, basically what happens, the way this works for those uninitiated in, in vinyl cutting, is it you have your vinyl backed on this um, sort of wax papery material, and what happens is the blade just cuts out the vinyl and leaves the wax papery material as it is, and then you what, would call, what, you, what is called weeding is you pop out the various pieces, like, okay, so I just pulled the center out of that uh, O, on there that's called weeding and I've now removed that and then what you do is you take this I gotta get rid of that the center of that circle stuck to my hand what happens is you, you then you take this release tape which is like really low tax scotch tape you lay it over the top of this and then you peel this off the wax paper then you apply it to whatever you want to apply it on it's that simple um, so very effective and very simple. So this is how vinyl cutting works, and that's how you know you see all these uh, vinyl cut signs and that kind of stuff. So again, I think it, it, you know it, if you just have a 3D printer and you're just making you know various things, it's not a big deal. But again, if you're looking at you know an Etsy type shop or an eBay type shop, low run prototyping, I highly recommend getting one of these. And I highly recommend the 19 inch. You know, if you have a big shop area and you got plenty of room you know by all means go for the bigger 31 inch but if you're on limited space like you know most maker shops are this 19 is really a good option so anyways hopefully I've shared some of my logic now I'm not going to be doing sign making um, videos so rest assured of that no sign making videos however I am going to be doing some videos about how to make um, you know, I don't know really what to call them. I don't want to call them face plates, but you know, decals or whatever that you know, uh, for you know, different 3D printed laser cut CNC objects. You will see me do that, and I'll show you how I take a design and workflow. And because this, this I think is key, how I take a design, you know, say an Inkscape, move it through either to 3D print, laser cut, or CNC it, as well as then bring it into a vinyl cutting flow to create you know a wrap for it or something like that because I think this is again the powerful thing of this is you can take a 3d print you can wrap it say for example you wanted to do a clock and I think this is probably a, a good one that I'll do in the future is you could 3d print the actual clock casing and then you could print the face on this laser overlaid on your 3d printed clock and boom you have a clock face on that 3d printed object so again I think it's pretty cool and then also if you're into customizing things you customize it it's limitless I could stay in here for hours and talk and I, but I think I've rambled enough so anyways um, you know the routine swag shop up there hit me in the comments below if you got one of these and you're using it in your maker shop let me know how you're made how you're doing it and maybe give me some tips and tricks I'm brand new to this I've seen them work before and everything I'm a little bit familiar with it but have not really done it myself before so this is a new learning experience and don't forget to subscribe button, comments below, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.